One of Music Reader's best features is its ability to add ink annotations to digital sheet music. Using a mouse or a trackpad, you can easily draw ink and highlighter markings in a variety of colors, as well as add image stamps of traditional music notation symbols and typed text. And since the sheet music is in a digital format, you can easily erase any colored markings added to the music. You simply can't do that working with paper music and colored pens. Now one option to make it easier to draw annotations on your computer is to add on a USB graphics tablet like this bamboo pen tablet from Wacom. This will work with any Mac or PC computer and works just like a mouse except that you're using a much more comfortable pen form factor. Again, it'll work with any computer, Mac or PC, equipped with a USB port. Another option is to use a different type of computer called a tablet PC. Tablet PCs enable you to draw directly on the screen using a digitizer pen. And with some models, you can even use your own finger to press icons and to draw. Now, Let's take a closer look at working with annotations in Music Reader. To work with annotations within Music Reader, let's go to the top menu bar and click on the icon that says Annotate. This has a picture of a small pencil and eraser. Just clicking on this will open up a new set of tools right next to it. Let's go over these one by one. The first tool over here is the Draw tool. This is the basic ink drawing tool. The Erase tool is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. The mark tool is another word for the highlighter. This creates a transparent ink mark. And the next tool after that is the image mark. This, is, this works like a stamp, and this will create image stamps of music notations as well as text stamps. And then you have a couple of modifiers. You have a color option, and then you have a line thickness option, and then we have some other tools that will uh, affect some of the operations of the way we work with our uh, annotations. So let's go ahead and go over these tools one by one. By clicking on the draw tool, you'll see that the box around it is thicker, so we know that that's active. If I want to change the color, I can go ahead and click on the color box, and then I'm given these options. They go everything from dark black to gray to these other brighter colors. We can change this to blue, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the red color. It's a little bit easier to see. And on this line thickness box, I can change the thickness of the line anywhere from one pixel, very, very thin, to something very, very thick down at the bottom here. Let's choose something in the middle. Go ahead and choose something with six pixels. Now using my mouse or my digital pen, I'm going to go ahead and click on the screen with my left mouse button, if I'm, using, if I'm a Windows user, or with just a regular mouse button for a Mac. Drag the mouse and I'm creating a line. Okay, let's do another one. Click, drag the mouse, and then release. We'll complete the line. And again, if we want to change colors, tap on that. Let's select blue, and I can create numbers. I'm actually using the bamboo graphics tablet, the pen tablet by Wacom. It's a wonderful tool and makes it very easy to draw much more comfortably just like I would with a normal pen. But again, this will work with a regular mouse and trackpad just as well. Okay? Now, if I want to erase some of these markings, I'm going to click on the eraser over here, and I would advise selecting a thicker pixel option, a line thickness option. This will affect the thickness of the eraser itself. I have it actually set the maximum right now. That makes it really easy for me to very quickly swipe through and get rid of markings. And I work with it just like I would work with a pen by just clicking uh, with the mouse button and then dragging the mouse back and forth to get rid of the line, so on and so forth. Okay? So that's pretty easy. The mark button, let's go ahead and click this one, and this will create a transparent line. Let's go over here, working again like a pen, click, drag, and it starts to create this transparent line where you can see the sheet music underneath. And again, I can change the colors. Let's go ahead and change this to a bl light blue over here. And you can see that the transparency will allow you to see both the ink and the printed music underneath. Very, very nice, useful tool. And you can use lots of different colors to differentiate between different highlights that you want to feature. Okay? Now, the image tool 
will give you the option to add traditional printed notation. Everything from accidentals to dynamics to even numbers for fingering or positions or things like that to other string symbols, note heads, uh, ornaments, and so on and so forth. So you have a very wide range of options to add uh, different types of notations. So let's go ahead. I'm going to add a dynamic notation. Let's add a forte here. And I'm going to change this to, well, let's go ahead and just use a blue color for right now. And by after having cho chosen that, I'm going to move my mouse. Clicking on it on the screen will stamp that. Uh, in a predetermined size. If that's too small, I can click on the screen, drag my mouse by holding the left mouse button down or the regular mouse button on your trackpad or Mac mouse, releasing it, and then I have a larger symbol there. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. Okay, For the Mac, it's a little bit quirky sometimes. Sometimes it works with certain images, so you'll have to experiment with this, but for the most part, you'll be able to drag and click and create these symbols on the page. Okay, now a couple more tools that we're going to work with. Oh, by the way, with these tools, you can also change the colors, of course. Okay, so if I want to change this to a red crescendo, I can do that just as easily. Okay, um, one more thing we want to do with the image stamper is to work with the text tool. And the text tool you're going to find within the image option all the way down on the lower bottom corner over here, the little tiny icon that says text. Clicking on that will open up a text box. This is something I wrote down a little bit earlier. Let's go ahead and retype something and then click on OK. And now that enters that text into the computer's memory. And I can, again, just like I was stamping on with these uh, dynat with these notation marks, I can go ahead, click and drag and create a text that will uh, be stamped onto the music. Go ahead and just clicking on it will create a very small version of that. Clicking and dragging will create a larger version. And again, I can change the color of this. Click and drag, and that creates the stamp over here. And again, everything is erasable. All the stamps that you've created are erasable. So I can get rid of this. I can get rid of that if I like. Okay. And it works just like an ink stamp. Another couple of tools I want to show you very, very quickly. This is an undo uh, option. When you click on this for the first time, you're going to be given several options. You can choose from undo to redo. Okay, so let's go ahead and click the undo, and that'll undo my last action. I erased this last, if you saw that. Okay, I'm going to do one more action over here just to illustrate this a little more clearly. Let's go ahead and I'm going to circle this area over here. And by clicking on the undo option, you can see that circle goes away. I'm going to click on redo, and it brings the circle back. All right, now if I want to go ahead and clear all the ink markings, I can press on this clear button and all the ink markings go away, just like that. So I don't have to uh, use my eraser to manually get rid of everything. Let's go ahead and undo that and bring my Mackie markings back. So you can see, as I, I was mentioning, working in a digital sheet music file format makes your inking and annotation so much more flexible. You don't have to worry about damaging your music you can erase your markings very, very easily. You can add colors without fear, again, of making it permanent. You can, uh, this will, by the way, this will say, when you close the uh, program, uh, Music Reader has an autosave feature. There's no separate save button for uh, adding annotations or changing the file. This will automatically save when you close the program. So, again, another nice feature. So the ink stays even when you change the page. Change to another page. Let's go back. And you'll see that the ink stays right there. Okay? So uh, again, a tremendous flexibility working with inking within Music Reader in a digital format. And uh, I hope you'll take some time to explore some of these really cool inking and annotating features within Music Reader.